In today's Money Count segment, the White House today wasting little time jumping on the news that Mitt Romney says he pays a net income tax rate of about 15%. It's his federal rate because most of his income is from investments. And the administration says this is proof that the rich need to pay higher taxes. But what they fail to point out is that if you hit Romney's income from things like dividends, you're also going to be hitting millions of middle class retirees who count on that money to live on. To tonight's power players, we got Ari Zoldan, Jennifer Openshaw, and Mark Matson. Mark, isn't that true? These things always are aimed at a few rich people, like the uh, AMT tax, and they end up affecting millions of us. You know, my job is to protect the uh, middle class uh, investor, and I want them to stop focusing on Romney or Kerry, any of these guys in the multi billion dollar range. Focus on yourself. Look, your current dividend tax rate is 15%. In two 2013, that's going to go to ordinary tax rates. You get the dividend a maximum of 39%. And the dividend tax is an onerous tax because corporations have to pay tax on that first. So that's 35% plus a maximum of 39%. You could be looking at 50 to 70% of the money you could be getting as a dividend from a company being right. sucked away from the federal government. That's bad for Main Street. All right. And Jennifer, just to my initial point, the fact is, is that 23% of American retirees depend on stock or bond mutual funds, the, the money that they get from those financial instruments. Wouldn't they be hit? if we try to hit the rich folks like Mitt Romney. Well, he makes a good point, but it's interesting that Warren Buffett, by the way, says he pays 11% in taxes, lower than his secretary. Why did he not get criticized? Because he said he should pay more in taxes. And Mitt's 15% is actually less than the 19% that the top 1% of uh, income earners make. The bottom line is that middle-income Americans do not have the same access to the investment opportunities that wealthy people get. Um, wealthy people like Mitt Romney Yes, but get they access. depend on some of those deductions. That's the point, Jennifer. 23% yeah. of them do. That's a lot of Americans. Yeah, they, they do, and I don't want those folks hit, exactly. but the bottom line is we need, we need a simpler tax system. Um, we, need, we need one that's fair to all Americans. Yes. We, need, um, uh, uh, we need jobs so that middle-income Americans are able to okay, continue saving and investing. We, we certainly and need the bottom jobs. Line is but Ari, let's keep it on topic here, which is taxes. The fact is, is that rather focusing on bringing up taxes, tax rates, why don't we focus on bringing them down, ending these deductions, these special deductions that only the billionaires I, get. I agree with you, David. We have to do every single thing that we can to be able to bring the money back to the middle class, back to the lower income earners. This is where the opportunity is. We haven't America even begun today, to talk though. about 401k, no, by No, just, just wait till we get into that. But I can tell you that today, the number one issue is, I think, it's taxes, it's health care, and it's creating jobs. We need to do whatever we can to be able to bring that to the So, people. Mark, what happens when, when this is used as a campaign issue? It hasn't really been rolled out yet. Uh, but if Newt doesn't do it, and frankly, I don't think he will after the, the feedback he got on his Bain Capital attacks, but when, when the president himself rolls this out, will Americans buy it or will they say, now, wait a minute, you, you focus in on the super rich and eventually you hit me? Well, look, greed, uh, ego, and envy is a huge part of human nature, and that's why it's so important for investors to focus on the reality of their world. Look, it would be much better if dividend taxes were eliminated totally, so that when I invest my money in a stock, I'm getting that dividend for my retirement. You made a great point. If you're making $50,000 a year in dividend for money you invested your whole life, right now, a huge portion of that in 2013 is going to be sucked back away from the government. Look, eliminate dividend ca taxes, capital gain taxes, Give America, middle class America, a break here. Well, that kind of yeah. tax reform would be nice to see, Jennifer, but I don't think it's going to happen in election year. Do you? Well, I don't in election year, but that's why even Herb Cain became so popular with his 999 program is because people are looking for something that's simple, right. that's fair. And a new study today came out and said that 68% of Americans said that their income is declining. And that's why you're right. Those dividends are yeah. so important to retirees. I see okay. it with my own mother. Guys, yeah. we've got to leave it at that. Ari, I'm going to give you the first crack at the next <laughs> segment, which is coming up at the Deal. end of the show. So can't the retirees... Two and a half years ago, President Obama made this promise about his health care plan. If you like your doctor, you'll be able to keep your doctor. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. Now, Obamacare doesn't go fully into effect until 2014, but some health care companies already are abandoning markets and dropping customers in anticipation of big losses. So the impact is hitting us a lot sooner than people thought. We welcome back our power players. What do you think about this, Ari? I think this is a tough nut to crack, that's for sure. 
Um, <laughs> we have the entire health industry right now sort of very nervous to see what's going to happen, even though the plan's only going to come into effect probably um, only within the next two years or so. So I think there's going to be a mat we're, we're on the brink of uh, a massive shakeup right Jennifer, now. Jennifer, the fact is, is that when you require insurance companies to cover more people, like kids until they're 26 or whatever it is, it's going to cost more. And as a result, they, they either drop customers or they lose money. And guess what they'll do first? Well, as someone who's been both in Silicon Valley and in government, I never want to see businesses hugely impacted as it, as it looks like they are now. Um, because if they can't provide insurance, it's obviously going to impact, impact their ability to retain workers and, and to be competitive. Um, on the flip side, the interesting thing is that, you know, the healthcare industry has been a mess. Millions of people have been left behind without coverage. People can go to Mexico or elsewhere, as they've started to do, to get certain treatment. And um, it's something that I would want to take a closer look, but I think it's being ex exacerbated also by the economy and people who are both not able to pay their bills and companies uh, not able to thrive in the same way that they had, you know, in a good economy. Yeah, but Mark, what is, what is happening here, again, very specifically, is that now through Obamacare, these insurance companies have a whole new set of mandates that they have to cover. And given a choice between dropping certain groups that include those mandated people and, and covering them at a loss, they'll drop the people. Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield in New York, seven of the 13 group plans it currently offers to businesses which have two to 50 employees are being dropped. So it's the small businesses that are being affected most by this. Well, I'll give you an example. I have 37 employees. I pay $200,000 a year in premiums for health insurance, and I can't find a competitive quote in the Cincinnati market because these insurers have been driven out of the market. If you want to have competition and growth, you have more people in the capitalist system, you have less regulation, and the rules the way they are right now, they eliminate pre-existing conditions and they get, do away with the ceiling. That's a, a surefire way to bankrupt any health, uh, health insurance right. uh, uh, system. Well, that, so uh, and, this is and, not good for an entrepreneur. Go ahead, Jennifer. And that, that's just one of the huge unintended consequences because, as you said, now you've got markets where there are just one or two insurance uh, players and you've got less ability to negotiate and lower rates. And so there's not competition, and that's just going to affect the consumer in the long run. Well, and you know, Ari, I think the one big thing that, need, that, that some Democrats and, and most Republicans, Republicans agree on is that there should be ability to buy insurance policies across state lines, particularly if you're being dropped by one in state. No? Correct, correct. And if you have, a, a, you know, extra capital to go, up and to buy up, I think that would be. I think even that, Democrats that would, that would could go ideal. for that, don't I, you? I agree, and I think also, I think you know, healthcare in general. I think the, the basic premise um, of having a socialized system, sort of, or a quasi-socialist system, is not a bad thing for all Americans to but have health care. It's interesting that you call it a quasi-socialist quasi -social, quasi -social, system, quasi -social, a quasi-socialist system. Listen, but, he he every single American having health care, I think, is an amazing thing. And I think if we can strive for that, both Democrats yeah, and Republicans. But if the quality Republican, goes though, down as it has but, but, clearly in but England. It doesn't, oh, no, no, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, it doesn't yeah. have to suffer also. I think if a, mm. if a strong plan is... You have the magic formula. If a strong plan strong plan is put in place, I think getting health care to every single American would be ideal. Last word from Ari coming up with the Solyndra message.